right, you guys, all of the information for So My Style 2020 has been released. They have a lot of really exciting things happening this year. I know that in 2019, I made a commitment and completely failed early on. I mean, it was a quick, quick <laughs> failure on my part. Maybe by February, I was like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting to the, so my style stuff. So, but this year I am recommitted because it is a lot of fun and it's such a cool concept and it really does bring the whole community together. So this year they made some changes every year, the little team of people that work on it changes. So here are the people that are going to be helping out this year. You might recognize some of the faces. And they also made some changes in terms of the patterns that they are featuring. So this year, in order for a pattern to have been considered, they had to offer patterns above a size US 22. And then they also decided to offer men's and unisex patterns so that no matter what your gender identity is, you can participate in So My Style. And I just love that idea of inclusion. So some of the things are still the same. You're going to get two patterns to choose from every single month. Each month, those two patterns will have a coupon code that you can get the patterns for a discount. Then you post your make the last Sunday of a month of the month. That's also a little change. I no, no, no. It's the last day of the month. It used to be the last Sunday and people found that to be really confusing and we're missing the deadline. So they've just made it the last day of the month. You post your make and then they offer prizes. So the only thing about this whole blog post and what all the information that they have given out is that when you go to look at the patterns and sponsors like we're doing here, they didn't link to the actual patterns. They only linked to the pattern companies. So if I were to click this, it would take me to radpatterns.com, which is so annoying because then you have to go there and search for Courtney bodysuit and remember the name of that blah, blah, blah. So I decided to do all of us a little bit of a favor. And I have pulled up in all of these little tabs, all 24 patterns that are being offered as a part of So My Style in 2020. And we're going to go through them kind of like a first impression. Some of these are older patterns like the Tanya Kulots have been out for years, it feels like. So some of them aren't truly a first impression, but we're going to review them like we review all of our first impression patterns. We're going to review fit. We're going to review all the different options you have. We're going to review sizing, all of that. So let's jump right in. We're going to start with Rad Patterns and their Courtney bodysuit. And I'm also going to be kind of assessing the time of year that these patterns are being released because I think that that makes a big difference too. So we've got a bodysuit in January. I think that that's, you know, fairly appropriate. I think that a lot of people are wearing, you know, tops and pants, you know, in the colder months. Uh, this one is very basic, which is great because I think so my style is wonderful for someone who's just learning how to sew and is like trying to find their way through all of the patterns that are out there. This kind of narrows it down and gives everybody a chance to kind of work on new things, but not be so distracted by all the options. So this one here, like I said, is very, very basic. You've just got a knit bodysuit. It's got a very conservative leg line, um, a simple neck band. The shoulders on this one, and I can barely touch it because it zooms in so much, but the shoulders on this one seem a little bit long. Like maybe those should be taken in by an inch or so. And then if you look at this arm here, you can see that it's kind of a, a weird... And if you look at this arm here, you can see that it's kind of like a weird armhole shape. It's almost like the top of the sleeve is like a, is almost like a tube, but maybe that's what's also creating this little pucker that's happening here. So there might be some issues with the pattern drafting that you'd have to take a look at, mostly in the arm side. And then I can't tell if this is a sample or if this is the, the girl who's modeling this is the one who made it, but... It's a very interesting choice for their cover, seeing that there's so many kind of weird issues with the photo. But either way, like I said, very basic, um, 
little pattern that you can, you know, make your own, make just as it is. You can probably sew it up in an hour. I mean, it can't be that complicated. So our options for, I really hate this zooming thing. That's so annoying to me because then I can't point and I like to use my little cursor as a pointer. Um, maybe if I tap on it. Nope. Okay. So your options are narrow front neckline can be paired with high scoop or mid scoop back neckline, or you have a wide front neckline and that can be paired with a low scoop or mid scoop back line. I mean, there's a typo there. And then you also have one, two, three, four, five sleeve options. So doing some simple math here, it looks like we have six times four times five. I know how to do the equation. I do not actually know what that number is. Six times four is 24. 24 times five is like 120 something. Oh God, 100 and something. <laughs> different options. There's a ton of different options here is all I'm saying. Right? Narrow front neckline with a high scoop, narrow front neckline with a mid scoop. Oh no, that's only four. So four times four is 16, 16 times five is whatever that is. And that's how many options you have to make. So certainly everybody can find something that they like, whether you want it to be a little scandalous with a low back or not, whether you need a long sleeve for coverage or not, they've got you covered here. And I really love that. And then this is also one of the pattern companies who shows like a ton of different, um, I guess these are their tester makes. So you can see a variety of body shapes all rocking this bodysuit, which I think is so cute. This is probably the option that I would make, a long sleeve, regular scoop neckline, and, you know, use it as like, kind of like this, tucked into pants or jeans or whatever. I think that that would be really, really great. Okay, now let's move on to if they talk about fabrics at all. Um, size is extra, extra small to 6X. And they have the large format, which I'll talk to you guys some more about in January. Layers, you can cut the size you need, full instructions, made for fabrics with at least 50% stretch four ways, across the grain and vertically. For the adventurous beginner, sewing level and above. I don't even know that I would call it that adventurous of a beginner. I mean, maybe because you're working with knits for the first time, but I don't know. So yeah, you need a really stretchy fabric, four-way stretch. If you have a fabric that has less than 50% stretch, four ways, then you'd have to like size up. Yeah, make a larger size because you just, it wouldn't have as much stretch. So, so yeah, I think that's, this is a great option for January. It's very, you know, universally flattering on everyone, everybody, every shape um, should be making it. So it's not like it eliminates anybody. The other option for January is the Megan Nielsen Tanya Kulots. So like I said, this pattern has been around for a minute. I've seen a variety of different versions of this. It's a very wide leg culotte that almost reads as a skirt if you make it out of a light enough fabric. This is some kind of linen, maybe even a linen blend. And it's midi length, as you can see below the knee. It's a little, um, well, I mean, maybe because I'm looking at this springtime version. I have to imagine this was released in the spring for Australia. That's where Megan Nielsen Patterns is. Uh, so yeah, maybe people who live in Australia are making this right now, even though it's winter for us and wouldn't be caught dead in a short pair of culottes. But I do have some culottes, some more so that are this length and I really love them. So this is our third length of culottes. Like I said, you can, it really looks like a skirt, very voluminous. Um, it actually would look really great with the with the uh, Courtney bodysuit tucked into it. Anytime you have something super voluminous on the bottom, you know, getting something tighter on top always balances that out well, especially for those of us who are pear shaped. It's really just like the fit and flare just in separates. So modern take on culottes, combining the practicality of shorts with the appearance of a skirt pattern features a fitted waistband 
wonderful drape, invisible side seam zipper, and hidden center front and back pleats to create the illusion of a dart. Oh, that's fun. And you have these little um, slant pockets, which are nice. I mean, this pattern, like I said, has been around forever and ever, and there's a reason why it's so popular. Um, Megan Nielsen also makes my favorite circle skirt pattern. It's actually free if you sign up for her newsletter. So if the if this waistband is drafted similar to that circle skirt pattern, then it's a really good waistband. I know that there are really bad waistbands out there, especially in the indie world. But if this one's any like that, anything like that circle skirt, we would be good to go. Um, so yeah, like I said, there's four different lengths, I think. View A is a short with full skirt. View B is knee length with full skirt. View C is midi length with less fullness. And view D is knee length with less fullness. So here they are again. So I'm guessing she's wearing the less full one, which is kind of surprising. Still very, very full. All right. So sizing. Oh, you know what's interesting? They said that the, oh, here we go. Looking for curves, sizes 14 to 30. So you'd have to go to this other website to get the yardage and um, sizing for anything over a 14. Yeah, because I'm at the top of her size range in this, in this sizing. So there. So there's that. <laughs> um, finished garment. We have a finished waist. Yeah. I'd be like an 18. Um, fabrics. Look for light to medium weight fabrics with plenty of drape. Yeah. Works well for all variations. Ideal fabrics include crepe de chine, cotton crepe, chalet lawn, rayon linen, lightweight wool, tinsel, and chambray. So yeah, it's a little bit lightweight for January. You know, I mean, it's going to be like snowing and freezing in a lot of the parts of the United States. You know, uh, a lot of my viewers, it's going to be really cold. But I mean, I guess you could make something and then layer up and then in the springtime, you know, you have something already ready to go. All right. So next on the list is February. Oh, and the gift card for January is a $75 gift card to Promenade. Promenade is in um, New Orleans and $75 would probably buy you like two yards of something. So, but they do have really cool stuff. So there's that. All right, January, we have the Friday Pattern Company Ilford Jacket and the Cloud Splitter Bags and Designs Summit Pack. So the Friday Pattern Company Ilford Jacket is this. Look at this cool styling. I have never sewn a Friday Pattern Company pattern before, but their branding makes me very intrigued. All right, let's take a look at some of these pictures. Okay, line drawings. We have like a short button down, boxy, a bunch of different pockets with like a pleated cuff sleeve and a collar. And then a long version without all that sleeve stuff and just a few buttons. This is like beginner, <laughs> this is intermediate, I guess. There's a long version. It kind of reminds me of just like a working jacket, you know, like, I don't know, something that the couturiers wear at the ateliers or something. Very utilitarian. Oh, here it is as a men's jacket, which is cool. It looks great on him. Oh, <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, and these fun little pockets that are you know, different sizes. That's kind of cool. 
All right, we've seen all the pictures. The Ilford jacket is a versatile style that's modular design makes for a pattern that's simple yet impactful. It can be customized a million different ways and really is a choose your own adventure type of pattern that incorporates your design sense into the project. It features drop shoulders and comes with two sleeve options, a placketed sleeve cuff and an easy to sew boxy sleeve for a more relaxed vibe. It also includes two links as well as a bunch of pocket templates that you can mix and match. The possibilities are endless. You can wear the Ilford jacket or shirt, oh, as a jacket or shirt, depending on the fabric you use. This is a fun skill building pattern that you will want to make and wear again and again. This pattern is for everyone and looks great on all genders. And it comes in sizes extra small to 4X, designed for wovens. Oh, and 5% of the sales go to charity. That's fun. Um, here are the yardage requirements. So about less than two yards. Well, wow. A little more than two and a half on this one. Just depending on what size you make. And then notions, you need buttons. Fusible interfacing and thread. And fabric is... They're recommending wovens for a boxier look, go for lightweight canvas, linen, denim, or corduroy. Corduroy would be cute. It also looks amazing in a drapey woven. When sewn up in flannel, it's the perfect fall layering piece. The design lines of this pattern are simple enough that you have room to experiment with fabrics you may not have worked with before. That's fun. All right, let's take a look at the Summit Pack. So this, yeah, this is one of those like cross body adventure type of bags. That's fun. Um, I love when they say this purchase is for a digital PDF sewing pattern, not a finished bag. <laughs> they must have so many people who think that they're buying the actual bag. All right, let's look at the photos. No, okay. There it is on the inside. Bags are so fun, I think, especially you know, in the mix of all the craziness of sewing clothes, bags are kind of like a slow sewing thing. Fit doesn't matter. You just cut the one size. So that's nice. The Summit Pack is perfect for someone on the go. Great little backpack sling bag. That's what I was trying to think of. For day trips, biking, walking, vacations, and more. Summit has two zippered compartments for convenience. The front zipper has card slots and a pocket within. The central compartment has a padded gadget pocket and a zipper pocket. The back of the bag has an additional zippered pocket through which the bag is turned in the final step. This bag is designed in a unique piecing way. That means no binding. That is brilliant. Well, now I'm going to make this just to see the construction because the thing that's the most annoying about making bags is that you have to work with all that finicky binding around all those really weird curves and it's hard to fit in your regular sewing machine. Well, I am sold. I am sold. I don't really understand like how they did that, but I'm about to find out. <laughs> okay, cool. So then materials, you need three quarters of a yard for your exterior. And this is all assuming you're making it out of quilting cotton which as garment sewists, we don't really have to do that. You could make it out of any stable woven. So don't feel like you have to just make it out of quilting cotton. Um, like leftover corduroy from your Ilford jacket maybe, that would be cool. Or you could do it out of a pleather. Or you could do it out of obviously denim. You could do it, I'm trying to think of other things. You could do the lining out of like a fuzzy Sherpa or something. So yeah, don't, don't feel like you just have to make it out of quilting cotton, especially if you're not having to bind the edges. I'm so intrigued. Okay, you also need a three quarters of a yard of exterior fabric and they also use it for pocket fabric. You need a lining. You need, you know, just your general basic um, iron on interfacing. Then you need the flex foam or headliner foam, soft and stable, those kinds of things. Then you need one 13 inch zipper, a 16 inch zipper, two one inch D rings, a swivel clasp, a tri glide slider, 
two nylon zippers, one eight inch zipper. So yeah, you need a lot of stuff to, uh, to make this. I think Style Maker Fabrics has like a bag making kit that includes D-ring, swivel clasp, maybe the tri-glide slider. I don't know. And then for the, your zippers, I do know that you have to get the bag zippers. They have a wider tape uh, that make it easier to install the zippers. So it's a lot, but that could be really, really fun. So, all right. And then for February, you'll win a Samantha Claridge Studios gift card. I don't know what Samantha Claridge is. Never heard of that. Oh, it's a haberdashery. Shop my studio, tried and tested tools. Well, that's fun. You choose the fabric, we choose the thread. Yep, they've got different buttons. That's cute. Embroidery. Oh, ukulele case. All right, cute. I could spend 50 pounds there. All right, or I guess it's $50. 50, no, 50 pounds. Okay, the next set of patterns is our March pattern. So we are looking at the Layla Jane Willa Vest and the Liesl & Co. Gelato Blouse. The Willa Vest is going to be your, looks like your Interact Style Vest. It's got pockets, a cinched in waist. Here's this. I think that might also be a hood. Some funky pockets. If you've made the Kelly Interact, you know that their um, like hip pockets are a little bit tricky. These actually look a lot easier to make. Yeah, here's the hood. Here she is again. This just looks a little bit small, like they didn't do a full bust adjustment. And look how... Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. What's happening? It's not enjoying me moving my cursor. Um, the arm side is, there we go. The arm side is very tight on her too. So I'm not sure if she just needed to go up a size or what, or if it's like the pattern where we would need to kind of evaluate the sizing a little bit better. But yeah, it just looks a little bit small from the upper bust through the shoulder. All right, then there's also this option that you can make out of like a Sherpa or something. And you know, you've seen these everywhere. Um, and it seems pretty straightforward too. I mean, it looks like a princess seam and a zipper. Called it a day. All right, here is the pattern specs. So here's the sort of um, Interact style. For a sleeved utility jacket, check out the add-on. So you can purchase a separate sleeve to attach onto this guy. The Willa vest is a princess seamed outer or sorry, outdoor vest with optional elastic view. A includes a snap flap, front zipper, breast pockets, and either patch hip pockets. A snap on gusseted hood is available for view A. So it's detachable, that's fun. View B is a plain vest with a zip up front and optional welt pockets. Please note the elasticized waist is not compatible with the welt pockets. Okay. Um, materials, let's see what they say about, oh, uh, fabric. Fusible interfacing for both main and lining, medium to heavyweight woven or knit fabric with very little stretch such as Ponte, quilted poly, quilted cotton, quilted nylon, flannel, fleece, or wool. You can also use faux fur or minky for the lining. Welt pocket can be lighter weight fabric. Huh. Um, view A, you need some elastic. Quilt or fleece batting for quilting your own fabric. All right. And then you need your snaps. So there you have it. Extra, extra small to 4X on the sizing, which I think is here. Yep. Um, so upper bust. Oh, and it comes in two different cup sizes. 
even more so why they should have maybe I, I don't know why hers looks so small the models um, waist lots of measurements here and then finished measurements they've got length and bust width and hip width I don't know why you can't see the bottom of this I guess that is the bottom um, so yeah I kind of run yeah I'm probably like a medium ish What's the, let me look at the bust compared to the hip. So finished bust width in inches. Yeah, the bust is very roomy, even in the A and B cups. So yeah, I don't really know what happened in the sample version. All right, the, no, 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 what's happening? The gelato blouse by Liesl and Co. How can we look at this? is just a little like loose fitting dress. Oh, here's the top version with a little peplum top. I mean, yeah, peplum ruffle on the sleeve and the um, hip and then it's buttons down the back. Probably bias binding finish there. Relaxed pull-on peplum blouse and A-line dress. I don't know about A-line. Feature a scooped neck and bust darts. The blouse view A includes ruffled peplum and sleeve as well as a button placket back detail. The A-line dress view B includes short sleeves, double welt angled front pockets, and a center back seam. You will find so many ways to sew this versatile pattern, which also includes detailed instructions for doing a full bust adjustment. All right. Uh, so it's suitable for a wide range of light to medium weight woven fabrics with medium drape like quilting cotton, chambray, voile, lawn, shirting, poplin, broadcloth, linen, rayon, silk shantong, or dupioni, wool suiting, and lightweight jacquard. I think these last ones probably are more suitable for the dress than the top, but lots of options there. Especially if you're trying to do like a little scrap busting project. What is the um, English system pattern sizes? Uh, nope, that's just pattern sizes. Oh, look, these are some of the people that have made their own. That's fun. Um, I was trying to see how much fabric you'd need, but I don't think... Oh, here we go. Fabric guide. So if we're using our normal 58-inch, you know, garment sewing fabric... Oh, two yards. Really? Oh, that's for the dress. Uh, two yards also for the top? Yeah, two yards, and then it goes up to like two and three quarters of a yard, depending on the size. Well, that's surprising. This must be a very intense ruffle. <laughs> All right, so yeah, and if you win in March, you get an Imagine Nats gift card. They have a lot of fabrics. All right, in April, we've got the Sinclair Patterns Nova Sweatshirt. And the five out of four men's redwood. So it's more like this. All right. So here's the Nova sweatshirt by Sinclair Patterns. Let's look at some pictures. Knit raglan sweatshirt pattern. So yeah, you've got your raglan sleeve, a little neckband, optional pocket, cuffs at the wrist and the hip. This one has a little funnel neck and a waist elastic and then this one has kangaroo pocket and then even maybe even a hood i don't know how big this little neck situation is so yeah i'm guessing that's the hood of this one with the kangaroo pocket cute 
I like the binding on the kangaroo pocket. It's a little bit long. Like I would want it to end where the bodice ends. So maybe shorten this whole thing by however wide the um, band is. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Yeah, still just a little bit long for me. This is a cute version. She didn't, she swapped out the neckline. Oh, that's fun. Fun use of fabrics. Where is this neckline? I want to see this. Why is no one making that? Oh, that one's cute. Very ready to wear. Literally no one is making that other neckline. Well, that's annoying. Is that it? That must be it. That's cute. That's super cute. This is a good one. I'm excited for this. All right. Featuring relaxed at the shoulders, bust and waist, fitted at the hips with the bottom band or semi-fitted at the hips with the drawstrings. Classic raglan sweatshirt offered with crew neck finished with a band, a medium sized lined cowl or overlapped lined hood. Sleeves are finished with fitted cuffs. Can have a chest patch pocket or a classic kangaroo pocket finished with bands. Very easy to make and a versatile sweatshirt that be, can be done in so many variations. So there you go. Knit fabrics, we've already talked about that. Um, yeah, beginner. Great. Mm-hmm. Got all that. The PDF pattern comes in regular, petite, and tall with sizes from extra small to extra, extra large. So that will give you a lot of choice with your sizing. I might make a petite one and not have to worry about shortening it at all. Uh, three out of 10 on difficulty, one to two hours to finish. Medium to heavyweight knit fabric with at least 20 to 30% horizontal stretch. And 50 to 60% vertical stretch. I don't know what this means. At least 20 to 30% horizontal and vertical stretch. 50 to 60 inches wide, I guess is what that's trying to say. Oh, and then they have it broken down if you want to do all the contrast. So for the bodice, you need a yard. For the sleeves, you need a yard. The kangaroo pocket takes half a yard, blah, blah, blah. And you just add it all together. That's cool. Another good stash buster. Lining, ribbing, main fabric, cuffs, and bands. Oh, right. Okay. Other notions. Grommets for the little drawstring. The drawstring itself. Cotton thread. And then overlocker threads. All right. Cute. All right. The next one is the Redwood Fleece Vest. This is a men's pattern from five out of four patterns. I don't even know if I've heard of five out of four. If I have, I definitely haven't sewn any of their stuff. But this little men's vest is so cute. Look at all these guys. I don't know if they made them or they're a woman in their, oh, look at the little boy one. Um, the woman in their life made them and then they made them model them, which I think is also awesome. But obviously this is unisex and a female can wear this too. Look how cute. I love the matching. I'm guessing they have a kid's version of this somewhere. So there's one without any pockets. I actually think the pocket is a nice detail. These guys here. But it is a lot like that other Sherpa vest thing. So if you made that in whatever month that was, you might not want to make this again. Oh, wow. That's interesting. How fun. Oh, cute. I love the little contrast flap there. Sweet. Whoa, there you go. That's some personality. These pictures, <laughs> these pictures of actual people, I just love it. All right, so... Men's Aspen Fleece Vest. I thought it was called the Redwood Fleece Vest, but all right, we're going to go with it. A PDF sewing pattern for men's fleece vest with front zipper 
pattern includes optional color blocked yoke with chest pocket and optional hand pockets either with or without zippers. Fabric requirements. The fleece vest requires fleece fabric with at least 10% stretch polyester fleece, heavyweight polyester or cotton blended with lycra such as heavyweight French terry or sweater sweatshirt fleece will work well. Lycra will help a garment hold its shape. The lining which makes up the pocket should be a lighter weight fabric such as micro fleece, mesh, cotton lycra or stable knit with two-way stretch for the lower front of the vest. Smaller amounts of woven fabric such as quilting cotton and or nylon are used for the hand pocket facings and the chest pocket flap. Knit fabrics such as cotton or polyester like ribbons can be used in these areas but interfacing will be required. Wow, very specific <laughs> explanation of the fabrics here. And then you've got extra extra small through 5XL and that is going to get you a 27 inch up to 63 inch chest measurement and a 26 inch up to 65 inch hip measurement so yeah this is going to run the entire gamut of probably everyone you know um i'm actually falling into the small category and then i'd have to grade out to the medium on the hips which is fairly common for me so don't feel like just because you're you know a woman that you're going to fall out of the size chart on the low end. I don't think that's the case at all. So cool. A lot of really cool stuff here. It'll just be a matter of if you're going to make the, was it the Willa vest? Oh, where was it? Yeah, the Layla Jane Willa vest or this Redwood vest. And they're right after each other too. So keep that in mind. But I do think the gelato blouse is cute so is the nova sweatshirt though so i think any of these would be would be good and then in april you win a minerva crafts gift card another great fabric retailer a hundred pounds that you can get a lot of fabric there for a hundred pounds um they have some really affordable stuff my um holiday jumpsuit the red one from last year the fabric came from minerva the jacket too all right, in May, we have some new pattern release from True Bias. So I pulled up True Bias's website just so you can get an idea of the kinds of patterns that they release. Um, you can tell they're all very sort of modern, um, feminine types of patterns. Uh, nothing too, you know, over the top designer, very easy, relaxed wearing type of thing. This Ogden Cami is probably by far their best seller. The Nico Top is a close second. Southport has been around since I started sewing. The Emerson Pant, I know a ton of people who have made that. So they have a lot of really great, Roscoe Blouse is another good one. A lot of really great tried and true Lander Pants. I think everybody has made a pair of Lander Pants except for me because I'm afraid to make pants. Um, but a lot of great tried and true patterns that have lasted the test of time, uh, when it comes to all the home sewers out there. So whatever they release in the spring, I think will be a classic as most of them end up being and something that you would probably love, but that is going up against the game day Jersey from love notions sewing patterns. So this is exactly what you would think it is. It's like literally game day jersey um get ready to cheer your team on in a customized jersey made just to your team colors our jersey comes in two lengths shirt and knee length dress both views feature a split hem to add interest two neckline options are included you have a lapped v-neck as well as a scoop sew up this cute top or dress with either short sleeves or three quarter length sleeves our ladies pattern also comes with a full bust option in both the shirt and dress views. So we've got extra small up to 5X, full bust pattern pieces. So it's like they have an AB cup size and then also like a CD cup size. Mint for knits, quick sew, split hem, trimless pattern format, layers, print at home, and then they also have the AO file. All right.
So here are our line drawings. I love the dress, right? The dress is so cute. Um, and you can make it as quote unquote athletic as you want. I mean, if you leave off these little bands, then it's kind of just a really cute t-shirt dress, you know? Um, here are some options. This is the scoop neck shirt. The split hem is adorable. See, like that looks like a regular top. It doesn't look like a sporty top at all. Or you can like go all in on your team colors. Here's one. Dear mornings. It's not you. It's me. Just kidding. It's you. Okay. Oh, that's cute with the contrast, like feminine. That's really sweet. That's a good idea, too, if you didn't want to be too sporty with it. See? Regular top. So that one's a lot of fun. Let's see. 57 pages of pattern. Oh, God, that's that's probably the one thing I hate about um, indie patterns. But like I said, I have a solution, so don't you worry. Um, a print. Da, 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 da. We've got all that. We need to discuss uh, fabrics. Do they not have anything more specific about the fabric other than meant for knits? You can just use any old knit you want. Oh, maybe this. All right. Recommended fabrics. Light to medium weight knit fabrics such as jersey, rayon spandex, which is one fabric. It's a blended rayon and spandex blend, modal jersey, double brushed poly, cotton jersey, and French terry. More stable knits such as cotton lycra can be used, but sizing down may be needed. I think the more stable, oh yeah, maybe you would size down because it would be too boxy baggy. Interesting. Uh, thread, pins, iron, Stripes on the arm can be made with half inch wide single fold bias tape or knit fabric size chart. So we've got from a full bust of 33 up to 57 and a half. That's great. And they even give a bicep adjust, a bicep measurement. And then here's all your finished measurements. This is something that I love about ND patterns. They include all of this. Um, anybody who's designing patterns should have all of this information like at the ready. So there's no excuse for it. Talking to you, big four. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, there you go. Cute. Cute little, um, top pattern for sure. And this was when May. Yeah, totally. Totally in May. And then if you win, you get a spoon flower gift certificate, the quick sew project book, a sample pack, I'm guessing a fabric, and then a notebook, pencil, and enamel pen. So like a little sewing gift basket from Spoonflower if you win that month. Okay, next up we have June, which is like summertime here. So we've got the in the some new pattern from In the Folds and the Sew House 7 free range slacks. So this is what... Uh, in the folds patterns look like. So even more just simple and modern than the, um, who was it? Gosh, I already forgot the name. Then the uh, True Bias patterns. These are very modern, very sleek, very, not basic, maybe more simple is what I mean. Um, this Hove jacket I reviewed for one of my other first impressions, and I still love it every time I see it. Uh, a dress like this, though, not really for me, and neither is the Flynn jacket. So it will really just depend on, you know, what, what they put out next. But you can expect for it to be simple, clean lines, modern, you know, that kind of thing. And they are going up against the free range slacks from So House 7. So slacks in June for me is probably a no. I would much rather have had a dress uh, this time of year. But that said, these are kind of cool and lightweight. And especially if you do like a little rolled up version. Um, I 
they have, from what I can tell, an entirely elastic waistband. Um, here's the line drawings. Oh my God, I'm going to go crazy. Uh, so nice big pocket, slant opening, one pocket on the back, patch pocket there, elastic all the way around, really wide elastic. And then the straight cropped leg does not have a back pocket. Um, here are the girls wearing two of them in a linen, you know, uh, even like a tinsel, I think would be really nice, even in June. And because these are so kind of lightweight, I'm sorry, loose fitting, but have that elastic in the waist, I feel like I could probably get really close on the fit. Um, it's just the fitted pants that I just cannot, cannot deal so let me see if I can find just a couple of really good pictures instead of going through all of these with you. How about somebody without their hands in their pockets? No hands in pockets. How about her? Yeah, they're just so baggy through the hip area. What about a back? Anybody showing off their backside? Here we go. Cute, right? I mean, a little diapery, like a little diapery, but not that bad. How does this back view look? Yeah, her little leg kicked out like that helps look less diapery. But slacks are defined as tra trousers for casual wear. While we don't hear that term much these days, we think it's time to embrace it again. The free range slacks pattern is easy to wear as its name. You will feel free to roam. Okay, got it. Two options, a tapered leg version and a straight crop version. Both have an elastic high waist, side panels, front pockets that are top stitched in place from behind. I think that probably also means from underneath. And an optional back patch pocket. The tapered legs look great, rolled up, so the finished garment measurements show rolled and unrolled measurements. And the instructions include options for French and flat felled leg seams. That's a nice detail. If you don't know how to do either of those, that would certainly elevate these a lot. All right, recommended fabrics. Bottom weight fabrics that aren't too heavy, such as linen, cotton linen blends, cotton twill, rayon linen blends, light to midweight denim, tinsel twill, cotton poplin, and wool gabardine. Yeah, definitely some good options there. Very specific too. You could definitely just search for a lot of that and you would find something. Um, I love that they called Notion sundries. Elastic, one and a half inch elastic. That is some heavy, big elastic. And then the tools. All right. And then our measure, body measurements. Yeah. Waist and hip. So I am probably at the 14 mark and it goes up to 20 which makes me feel like they have a curvy option somewhere because doesn't it have to go above 22 to be included? Maybe this one slipped through the cracks. Um, you don't need that much fabric. I mean, a little less than two and a half yards. Oh, if it's 60 inches, you need less than one and a half yards. This is my kind of pattern. And then finished garment measurements. So you have your rise that you can check. That's good. Hip, finished hip garment measurements. So yeah, about three inches of ease in the hip. That seems fair and decent. So yeah, a lot of good options here for this. Gosh, yeah, it really just depends on what In the Folds puts out because you know, pants aren't my favorite thing to sew, but I certainly don't want to sew up a top like this either. Just not for me. You know what I mean? All right. So that month you get one set of custom pattern weights from the Bear and P Atelier. That's fun. All right. July, we have the Scoop Pina Pinafore going up against the Millicent Joy Honeycomb Bag. And I know I'm making it sound like these things are competing. They're not competing. It's, you get to choose. You could certainly sew both. I mean, you get the coupon code for both. So, um, all right. So here's the scoop pinafore. Oh, okay. Well, 
multi <laughs> looking forward to seeing that bag. Multi-size sewing pattern. Okay, I got that. I listen to you sewists. The scoop pin of four pattern is my response to all your requests for a dress that you could wear a top underneath. All right. All right, you can find the pattern here. Let's do that. Well, here is some, okay, here we go. The Scoop Pinafore is a casual over the head tunic designed for you to wear over a top. It's a statement square neckline contrast with the scooped sides, which house large and comfy pockets. The skirt has a slight bubble hem and sits just above the knee for someone who's 5'8". Jesus, for someone who's 5'8"? Okay. No zip needed. Yeah, it's the bubble hem, it's the wide straps, the scoop thing. I don't know. I'm not a big fan. Although, I have to say, though, I'm not a huge fan of pinafores in general, so I'm probably the wrong person to ask. <laughs> Um, fabrics would be most mid-weight fabrics, such as cotton, linen, denim, corduroy, velvet, wool, and double knit. Yeah, exactly. You could sew it out of just about anything. Um, so you need two yards of 60 inch fabric, half a yard of lining. Oh, is that for the pocket bags maybe? That's kind of cool. They show you the fabric layouts before you buy it. Not used to seeing that. Yeah, well, I mean, there's freaking five pieces, so it's got to be easy to sew. I don't know. Maybe I could make it cuter. I think if I eliminated this band and extended the length of this thing, you know, carrying out the A-line, it would be better for me. I just can see my hips in there and, you know, it's going to be like extra bubbly. Um, is this finished measurements? No. Body measurements. So, yeah, I'm at an 18. No, 14. I'm at a 14 U.S. And so that would make my, yeah, I mean, technically I'm a 12, I'm an eight in the bust, <laughs> a 20 in the waist, and an 18 in the hip. That makes no sense. I think the bust measurement, since it doesn't really stretch across the bust, is probably very flexible. Um, do we have any more photos, though? Oh, I like all the photos. All right. All right. Honeycomb bag. Oh, God. What am I going to do in July? <laughs> the honeycomb bag is a convertible bag and has two size options. Perfect for kids, teens, or adults. Grab and go handle, purse strap, adjustable backpack straps, and a crossbody carry-on. All right. It's not as bad as it seems. There's a mini that's 10 by 11, so think like a little bit bigger than a sheet of paper. And then there's a 12 and a half by 14 and a half. Hold small laptop, 11 inch zipper opening. All right. Are we gonna get, okay, here's some actual pictures. Let's look at those first. Oh, what is happening? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. All I did was click on this photo. Okay, here are our options. We, this is impossible to see. I want this. There we go. Now we're in business. All right, so we've got this crossbody. This must be the small one. You can hold it like this or you can put it as a backpack, but look how flimsy that looks. Like I like a very well stabilized bag. But I'm just not getting it from this. What, why is it doing that again? Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm done with the pictures. 
<laughs> you guys, oh my God, you guys, what is happening? Okay, let's check out the uh, like notions and stuff that you need to see if we can tell, why is there a size chart? See if we, uh, full bust adjustments. To see if we can tell how it's um, interfaced. Uh, knit fabric? What? Convertible bag has two, but we already read all that. No, those are not knit fabrics. Wow. Okay. Well, something's not right, but I'm thinking it probably has no interfacing at all. And I just don't know if that's something that I... Why, why every single time you click on a photo, it takes you to that. Yeah, medium weight cotton canvas or upholstery. I don't know what this thing's talking about. Oh my goodness. Yeah, something's not right with that little thing. Um, but it still doesn't say anything about interfacing or anything else, so... I mean, either it's going to just be like a really flimsy, casual bag, or you're going to have to figure out the interfacing on your own. I'm leaning toward making this really odd pinafore. <laughs> Plus, what is that, July? Yeah, I'm not wearing a dress with a shirt underneath it in July. It's too hot. Maybe a dress with a tank top underneath it. Oh, I'm frustrated about July. What are you in? Fabric Guys Online, a 50-pound fabric hamper. What's a fabric hamper? Fabric hamper. Hamper. Wow. No results. Does anybody, Is that like an, a British term or something? Does that mean gift card? Does hamper mean gift card? see look at all of these options this is just some of the fabric that they have I'm guessing a fabric hamper is a gift card you guys let me know or is it literally like a basket that you put your fabric in I don't know you guys let me know if you know all right now we're at August and we've got a cardigan and pants Oh, guys, this is going off the rails. All right, Lulu cardigan sewing pattern. <laughs> this is a PDF sewing pattern, not a physical product. I love that. Okay, Lulu is a close-fitting cardigan with princess seams for knit fabrics. Perfect for layering or wearing alone. The Lulu can be styled up with trousers or skirt for dressier occasions or down with jeans or leggings for a sportier look. Version A is cropped bomber style. Zip up cardigan featuring ribbed hem band and sleeve cuffs. View B is peplum cardigan with snap or button closures and hemmed sleeves. Let's take a look at some of these photos. Well, that's freaking cute. I mean, not for August, but it's cute. Oh, I've been re. So I watched all of season three of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And was sad that it was only eight episodes. So I just started over from season one. And like I'm almost at the end of season two now. And this totally reminds me of something that Midge would wear. Right? With a little Peter Pan collar. How fitted it is. I mean, this is fitted. But look at how good of a fit they got on this full bust. That's very promising. There it is unzipped. That's kind of cool. I like the bomber style knit cardigan. Just not in August. The lace one I'm not fully jiving with. Oh, and you can wear it to the gym, obviously. Oh, I've seen that fabric. That's at Joanne. Yeah, it's cute buttoned up and unbuttoned. Okay, I'm here for the cardigan. Definitely. Um... Medium to heavyweight knit fabric such as double knit, ponty, or scuba knit. 
Some lighter weight knits with decent recovery can be used, such as baby French terry or athletic fabric. Stretch lace or velvet are also beautiful options. Jersey knits or knits with rayon or linen blends are not recommended. And I think that's just because they want it to be more structured. I get that. It's not a drapey situation. It's more like a jacket. All right, I get that. And then you need your zippers and some snaps. Oh, optional cup sizes, B through E. That's good. And then body measurements. So your full bust goes from 31 to 54. I actually fall into like a, I don't know, eight or 10. And then your weight, we shouldn't need a hip measurement here. Uh, but your waist measurement, oh, I'm all the way at an 18. 10 to 18, that's like way too much to jump between. So maybe an 18 with a small bust adjustment? That sounds annoying. Or a, what did I say? 10 with a full bust adjustment. Wait, I'm getting them backwards. You know what I mean. Fabric? You need one yard? Really? Wow. Okay. Choose your garment based on your high bust. So I think my high bust is, I don't know, maybe a 12 actually. I don't know. I don't know high bust off the top of my head, but I don't think it's 34 and a half. I think I'd have to, I'd be in the middle and I'd size up to a 12. Then refer to finished garment measurements to choose a cup size. Oh yeah, the cup size with a bust measurement that is greater, half an inch greater than your full. Okay. Yeah, we already talked about fabric. Here it is. This pattern is drafted for a very close fit with minimal ease in the bodice. If using a knit with lower stretch percentage or if you would like a looser fit, consider sizing up to the next size. If your size is between two sizes, go up to the larger of the two. Oh, and then there's a little stretch ruler. That's cute. And then here's our finished garment measurements. Yeah, a lot of good information. Pattern Scout. I've heard of them, but I've never sewn from them before. All right, now we've got Layla Jane's Reed trousers. I'm pretty sure these are exclusively men's. Um, but if you follow certain people on Instagram, you'll see that women are also making men's trousers for that kind of like the boyfriend look. That's really where that came from. Um, some of this stuff makes me a little bit unsure. Like, I don't know what's happening here. This is no bueno for me personally. And even, I guess the loop just isn't long enough. I don't know. But uh, if, if you want to, you know, make a pair of boyfriend pants, boyfriend, I don't know that I would make this out of jeans, but boyfriend chinos, um, this is kind of where that was inspired from. You might have to do some alterations to the crotch curve, but you'll get like a very loose fitting pant. It looks just like a, you know, unisex trouser, really. Um, I think the only difference is in the crotch curve. So maybe find a pair of pants that you know you like the pattern of, uh, you know you like the crotch curve of, and compare it to this one. But I will not be making... <laughs> men's pants. I can't even get women's pants to fit me, right? So let's see here. Materials, woven bottom weight fabric suitable for pants such as twill in seven to eight ounces. Suiting, suiting in any fabric. Okay. And corduroy. Fabric should be medium weight and non-stretch. And then the pocketing. And interfacing, zipper, buttons, the usual stuff. And it looks like you need three yards, no matter how wide your fabric is, for all sizes. That's also kind of interesting. I guess there's not that many pieces, and the pant legs are really kind of straight. So, <clears throat> all right, cool. So this is the Layla Jane Reed. And again, classic fit, straight fit chino pants, optional welt pocket. 
Oh, here's a pants fitting guide. That's nice. Um, technical drawings, detailed fit, how to blend sizes or adjust length. Uh, intermediate. <clears throat> All right. Well, there you have it. Where can we get a full look? There you go. I love that they are incorporating different um, patterns, you know, more sizes, uh, men's and women's. I'm loving that. Okay, and if you win in August, you are getting a copy of this, what is it? A stylish Guide to Classic Sewing by Sarah Gunn and Julie Starr. <clears throat> so that's kind of cool. And then, all right, September, we have a so liberated lichen duster and a marigold dress by blank slate patterns. I might have made the marigold. I can't remember. But, oh shoot, where is the lichen? Is this the one where I couldn't find? Yeah. So the lichen um, duster isn't on her website, which was really confusing to me. So I'm in shop on her patterns page and nowhere on here is anything lichen or really a duster. Um, so just like the other ones where the patterns haven't been released yet, I just wanted you guys to see kind of the styling of So Liberated. It is, uh, kind of, oh, what's the word? I want to say Little Home on the Prairie, but that's not fair. That's, that, that's almost negative and I don't mean it in a negative way, but they are very, oh God, what is a good word? Just organic, natural. <laughs> um, I've seen some versions of this dress though with the three layers made out of different fabrics and it is super, super cute. But you can tell all of this stuff is kind of loose fitting. Um, pretty simple even. Um, you know, there's a lot of cottons here. There's a lot of you know, simple prints, you know, for their styling, for their um, pattern covers. But there is some cute stuff. There is some cute stuff for sure. So I imagine their duster would be something along the lines of this. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's so liberated. And then the Blank Slate Patterns Marigold Dress. I can't remember if I've made this one or not. I've made quite a few of them because they used to sponsor videos. Um, so I was getting free patterns uh, maybe the first year that we were doing the channel. Um, let's see if we can get some better pictures. Yeah, so it's like a half button placket with, I think, a stand collar forward shoulder with some gathering. Uh, I can't tell if that's a rolled cuff. You have a, a self tie belt. You have a pocket. This one seems to be shorter in the front than the sides and back, which is interesting. I can't tell why that's happening. Maybe because her pocket, her hands are in the pockets. There's also a dress version as well as just the skirt, I guess. Yeah, I can't remember if I've made this before or not, but the dress is super, super cute. And I'm really digging this one with the um, full like shirt dress sleeve. Everybody can use a shirt dress. I think that they are, they look good on everyone. Dress peplum and skirt only versions, cap sleeves, long sleeves with cuffs and elbow length split sleeves, which I guess is not pictured on here, elbow length split sleeves aren't on here. Button placket, two peplum options, straight like this, straight across or high-low, which it's straight across the front like this and then in the back it scoops down. Shirt, a skirt and dress also feature pockets, sizes extra extra small to 3X, bust from 30 inches up to 53 inches. And then here are some happening. <clears throat> These are the body measurements. I remember always fitting into her patterns really comfortably. 
Like I would probably be a extra large in the hip, large in the waist, and small a medium in the bust. So you can see that's really easy to grade, just one size up from each one. So awesome. And there's also, I think, elastic in the waist, so you can kind of fudge that a little bit if you want. <clears throat> Here is some additional, uh, oh, this is the fabric requirements. Suggested fabrics, light to medium weight woven apparel fabrics such as cotton lawn, wall, chambray, rayon, silk, etc. And I think too in September, like that is just perfect. A dress like this is, is really, really great. Um, Especially if you're in a colder climate, you can make the long sleeves, you can throw on some leggings or tights, you know what I mean? So this is a great choice for September for sure. Um, then if you win September, you get a My Body Model 1 premium download for My Body Model. I don't know what My Body Model is. Realistic croquis templates. So it's an app where you get a croaky. So premium download with two credits. I don't know. You get some version of a croaky, I guess. Yeah. All right. Fun, fun. All right. In October, we have Helen's Closet Pona Jacket and the Rad Patterns Men's Long Jammers. And then a PDF subscription to Sewn Magazine. Six bi-monthly issues val valued at like 90 bucks. That's not bad. All right, so the Helen's Closet Pona Jacket. The Pona Jacket is our modern outer layer that is easy to make and style. An extra wide facing allows this unlined jacket to drape open in the front, no closures necessary. Pona has an oversized blazer feel, complete with pockets and a statement lapel. Make a modern cropped Pona in linen for warmer weather or a longer jacket in wool for fall and winter. Pona is a perfect beginner jacket pattern. All right, let's take a look at this. This looks like the linen version, I guess. Drop shoulders, like she said, a, a dramatic lapel, patch pockets. Here's the longer version. I don't really love how it's opening like that. And I can't tell if that's how it's drafted or not. You know, here it is and it's not doing that. So, well, it is a little bit. What do you guys think of this? It is kind of like a, a boyfriend blazer, really. I think I'm gonna like the cropped version better. I just really like cropped jackets. There it is in like a chambray or a lightweight denim that looks a little bit like <clears throat> is it Rosie the Riveter a little like work like uh work the line <laughs> uh oh god what is the word whenever you're like in a production facility I don't know it's like a work jacket oh here you can see how it's I'm not a big fan of that that's all I can zoom in. So you, it's unlined except for the oversized facing. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, all right. For like a light casual jacket, sure. I don't know about like a wool winter coat though being unlined. I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. Oh, look how cute this one is. I'm obsessed with emerald green right now, in case you can't tell. I don't think it'd be that hard to draft a little lining. You know, just for the back half of the jacket. Cute. I like this swingy shape. I think I like this jacket a lot more in lightweight fabrics mostly because of the drop shoulder. I think it looks a little bit bulky whenever you're making it out of anything that's more, that's thicker. 
but all of these like lightweight is this corduroy i'm not sure but i think a lightweight corduroy would be great um a lightweight wool would be fine just something that's on the thinner side oh no this i think is that um i think it's that uh like rayon twill maybe i don't know that kind of looks like linen too i don't know maybe it's that brushed well, I'm not sure. It's cute though. All right, here's our size chart. And then I'm guessing she has larger sizes somewhere else because this only goes up to 14. And then the finished garment measurements go up to 30, so I'm not exactly sure how that works. But yeah, it's very roomy, very, very roomy. Oh, they're all the same all the way down. So it's literally a box. That's interesting. And then here's your fabric requirements. God, that's a lot of fabric. Oh, the shorter one. Still, it feels like a lot. I guess because it's so boxy. I mean, seeing this in the line drawing, that looks like a doctor's coat, right? So be careful about your fabric choice on the long one. I guess I was trying to think of factory worker earlier. <laughs> it doesn't seem like that complicated of a thing, but I couldn't think of it earlier. Yeah, I like the cropped one a lot, especially in these lighter weight fabrics. Mid-weight linen or cotton, corduroy and wool. 10 cell twill, that's what I was trying to think of, for a more fluid look. I think corduroy would be super cute. <clears throat> okay. And then the long john jammers is our other option. Oh, my. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Okay. Um, let's look at the pictures first, and we'll come back to that. Can I not scroll through this way? There we go. Long johns fit by making size as measured. Looser fit, making one size larger. They look really long. So I would take that inseam measurement for sure. These pictures are horrible. Oh, that's bad. That drag line, that's really bad. I get that no one's wanting to like, you know, custom fit long johns, but <clears throat> these little arrows suck. That must be the end. Is it the end? Yeah. Now let me go back to that information. Okay. These are body measurements, not finished garment measurements. This pant is intended to have bunched legs, so the finished inseam is much longer. Additionally, these are a long john slim fit with negative ease at the hip for a roomier fit. Please size up. Hip measurement taken at full, fullest part of hip. Okay. Well, you certainly don't need a ton of fabric for it, so that's good. And then the hip. Goodness me. I mean, I know there's negative ease, but half inch seam allowance and no alterations. So, my word, I'd be a 1X? Am I getting my numbers mixed up? I think I'm a 1X. That's wild. They do look super comfortable, though, right? <clears throat> And seam. Oh, and you can measure the calf too. That's nice to have the calf finished garment measurement on there. All right, designed for medium to heavy weight knit fabrics with at least 30% stretch across the grain. For optional yoga waist, you want to make sure your fabric has good recovery. So what do you what happens if you don't make the yoga waist? It just gets flipped down. All of these have shirts covering. Oh. Oh, is that it? 
I'm not a fan at all. I was so distracted earlier by this. I didn't even see what's happening up here. This is, I am, no. There's the yoga waist again. I just think that there's a better way. I don't know. I mean, I'm not making clothes for men either, but yeah, that looked homemade to me. And I, not a fan of that. If I'm going to spend all this time to make something, I want it to look like I got it in the stores. You know what I'm saying? All right. The November, we have this So Altered Style Dion Duster and the So DIY Alley sweater. So didn't we, yeah, we just had a duster in September and now we've already got another one in November. I mean, maybe because like I'm not a huge duster wearer, that seems like a lot. Let's see if they have any options. Well, uh, Dion is a versatile cardigan style pattern. Cardigan pattern with two views, three links, and three sleeve options so you can make the cardigan of your dreams. Get your copy today. No, that's not what I wanted. I guess I have to go here. <clears throat> All right, yes, this is what I wanted. Okay, so. Oh, a vest one, that's kind of cute. And then you've got these side splits, patch pockets. Here's the mid thigh version. And then I think that's the mid thigh version too. Out of a rib knit, that's cute. I like the color a lot. And then here's a below the knee length. The sleeves just look really long and baggy at the wrist, especially where was this one did I notice it most here. Like that's just too much ease in the wrist, I think. Here's the back. Oops. Oh, and then there's like a super short length with, is that like a fold over collar? It, I can't, no, that's just a, a band. All right. Yeah, it's just a band cut on the bias. All right, so we've got view A. Oh, it is supposed to be kind of a balloon sleeve on view A anyways. And then view B just has the cuffs. The Dion Duster is perfect combination of comfort and drama this duster length cardigan completes any look and is great for fall or spring layering or make it sleeveless for a light summer layer. View A features dramatic balloon sleeves, a thick two inch band to finish the front and generous slash pockets. View B has narrower front band, perfect for a button closure. Both views comes with three lengths and multiple sleeve options. All views come in sizes double zero to 30 with choice of either an AB cup or CD cup. So that's very nice. I wish I could see these other sleeve options. What are these mini sleeve options that they speak of? Is it just the sleeveless this and this? No, because we have an elbow link something or another here. Huh, they don't really say. Recommended fabrics include all types of light to midweight knit fabrics with at least 40% stretch. Choose a lightweight sweater knit for a drapey look or a cozy French terry for more warmth. Recommended fabrics include sweater knits, double knit, French terry, cotton jersey, rayon jersey, tinsel jersey, merino jersey, and rib knit. All right, and then this doesn't get bigger, so I'm sorry. Neither does the size chart. But they do have a lot of pictures from their tester group. What is happening? 
U A size four A B cup. I like that they kind of separate it by size and which view they did. That to me is interesting. All right, you guys can flip through these. You get the idea though. I think fabric choice is really critical here. Oh, color blocking, that's fun. Okay, I could look at tester pictures all day long. <laughs> all right, and then this is the Sew DIY, I don't feel like it was the whole sweatsuit, what was it? Sew DIY Alley sweater. which I'm guessing is this thing here. So very loose fitting, interesting yoke into the sleeve, into a dolman kind of thing. Yeah, that looks great right about now, am I right? Here's the alley sweatshirt pattern. Cute. Guys, I want this now. I love the contrast too. That's super cute. Look how fun. I like this. It's like oversized and slouchy, but I guess maybe there's some shape built into this. So it's not like linebacker it's not too bulky they're able to kind of get some fit into there i think i don't know it looks great on the model cropped which i also love drop shoulder sweatshirt with yoke advanced beginner sizes extra extra small to extra extra large crew neck scoop neck options and then you have your back it's the same for both and then your body measurements are here so it looks like I would be a medium through and through. Well, no, no, medium and then extra large is kind of where I fit. But seeing how generous this is, I could easily size down on the waist so I could just go like this. And depending on the finished length, yeah, finished high hip, I'm closer to the large, so. I could do a medium to large and would be fine. And then they give you bracelet sleeve length from neckline to end of sleeve cuff. So up and over your shoulder. And then you can have a longer slouchy or length sleeve. And then fabric requirements, you don't need a lot, which is great. I don't know, just see how it fits her shoulder and how it doesn't seem like there, I mean, there is extra fabric here, obviously, because it's kind of like a dolman, but I don't know, it just fits her shoulders really nicely, I think. I like this a lot. Cropped oversized sweatshirt with drop shoulders and dolman sleeves that narrows to the high hip. Features include a shoulder yoke and two-piece sleeves with additional top stitching, crew neck, scoop neck, bracelet length sleeve, or extra long for a slouchy fit. Casual sporty style is easy and fun to wear. Wear it to the gym, to the beach, or anywhere you need an extra layer of warmth with jeans and leggings not a physical product cute I like that and it looks like she had I mean did I read that right oh I already X'd out of it it looks like she had a little sweat pant uh, in that blog post um, as well so you could make a little matching set which would be super fun all right so that covers November you would win a pattern review uh, membership and a $25 gift card. Cool. And then the last month of the year, made by Ray Rose Pants and Shorts and the five out of four patterns Rita Fitted Skirt. So those are our options in December. And again, this doesn't really seem like a December-y pattern to me. I don't know if they were putting a lot of thought into the time of year. These look like a more springtime pant, you know what I'm saying? Okay, 
Rose is a high-waisted pant and short sewing pattern featuring slash pockets and a pleated or gathered front. The front waist is flat while the back waist is elasticized for comfort and style. Three lengths, long, cropped, or shorts. Uh, any woven fabric, I guess. <laughs> um, recommended fabrics. Light to medium weight woven fabric such as Tencel Twill, Rayon Chalet, Linen Rayon Blends, Silk Noir, Loose Weave Cotton or Linen Blends, Stretch Twill, Cotton Sateen, or Chambray. In general, I like it when they do this. Look for fabrics that have good drape and or a looser weave. Thicker bottom weight fabrics are not always recommended due to the elastic back waistband. While wovens with a small degree of stretch may work for this pattern, please note that Rose is not designed for knit fabric. Here are our diagrams. So do you, oh, you get these pleats still. That's what makes the fuller leg. I think this would look really great on me actually and very easy to fit with that elasticized back. Body measurements. Oh, I don't need the bust. So the waist, yeah. Yeah, really good. I would be in the same, the same size for waist and hip. That never happens. That never happens. That's awesome. Finished garment measurements. Uh, I don't know how much ease they want in the hip. Um, they want 47, five inches of ease in the hip. So 46, 51. I need to be closer to this 1X according to the finished garment measurements, which is usually what I look for. And then the waist... Wow. Okay. Maybe the sizing is a little more confusing <laughs> than I thought. I don't know if they're factoring in the elastic. I'm thinking, no, they're not factoring in how much you pull the elastic in because I would be an extra small at the waist. That ain't right. So I think that's why that's the finished waist measurements provided here are the waist dimensions before elastic is added. Okay. That makes so much sense. So much more sense. Okay, great. Those are super cute. Yardage chart. And we went over fabrics. Do we not have any more pictures? Hmm. The following blog posts. That's an interesting way to do it. Look how great these look on her. Love them. The shorts are super cute too. Yeah, I'm digging this pattern. They seriously look so good on every single body. This is great. This is great. I love this. And it's new. They just came out this year. So that's cool. All right, and then the very last one to review is the Rita, Rita Fitted Skirt. Well, I'm glad that I like those pants so much. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay, so it does have princess seams. Some kind of interesting take on a slit here. And a waistband that has seams in it. I'm not understanding that. Oh man, whoa. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not saying anything. I'm just a little bit, um, a little bit speechless. Some of them the construction looks fine. And then other ones, it's like, I don't understand it. Like, I, don't, I guess what I'm having a problem understanding is why this is the cover photo. That's so odd to me. 
Like, if it were me, I would have made this the cover photo. She looks great. Fits her in the hip well. I mean, in the waist well. Um, this all looks, like, fitted, but not too much, you know? She looks like a million bucks. But not my pattern company, so... Um, let's go back to this, yes. A PDF sewing pattern for a women's fitted skirt featuring a universally flattering high rise waist and three hem lengths. Customize your skirt to look and feel your best. No one, I don't think, in any of those pictures had a high rise waist. Okay, she does. Uh, that's hard to tell. So is that, so is that, so is that. All right, that's high rise. That's high rise. This is a little low on the hips or low on the waist. Hers is the highest, it seems. Okay, so maybe some people actually did get it high rise. Okay, um, choose from a solid or seamed color blocked skirt and multiple waistbands. Okay, Rita will allow you to effortlessly go from day to night and season to season. Okay, so it looks like you have a two inch waistband and a one inch waistband. You have princess seams or not. But what is so fascinating to me is that the princess seams run up into the waistband. I have literally never seen that before. I can't imagine what the construction of this is like. <laughs> I don't know that I want to know. Has anybody out there ever made this uh, pattern before? This pattern requires medium to heavy weight, stable knit fabric with at least 30% horizontal stretch. Measurements based on 56, yes, yes, yes. Okay, Ponty, Liverpool, Scuba, heavy weight cotton lycra, or French cherry. I highly recommend your fabric contain lycra for good recovery, yep. So that when your skirt does, so that your skirt does not become baggy while you wear it. Waistbands may be made in the same fabric. However, it must contain lycra for a good recovery. That's all very helpful in the fabric requirements. This is something we do not get from the big four. They just throw out some names and you're expected to either know them or learn them. So this is very helpful. All right. And then our waist and hip. Uh, again, I'm only in between two sizes, so that's good. And yeah, all this looks great. And look, you barely even need a yard of fabric, so that's great too. All right, yeah, I just think the pictures are throwing me off a little bit. And, and this, I'm not getting this. I'm wondering if you sew the waistband onto the skirt before you sew up the side seams. I don't know. I can't even begin to imagine that. Uh, okay, so that's it. If you win December, you get a one-year subscription to Sew News and Sew Daily TV. So there you have it. These are all of our Sew My Style patterns for 2020. Uh, getting a head start on next week, whenever this whole thing kicks off. You need to go grab your Courtney bodysuit and or your Tanya culottes. I'm probably definitely going to make the Courtney bodysuit. I've wanted one for a minute. I made one bodysuit earlier this year. It had a flowy top um, and quite enjoy wearing it. So I'm going to give this one a go. And I guess we'll chat about this again at the end of January whenever we're getting close to posting our makes uh, for the contest. So let me know what you think. If you've never participated in this before, what do you think of this format? Does it feel like something you would participate in? I, I do feel like it does bring uh, people together. So if you're looking to make sewing friends, this could be a really great way to do it. Um, what did you think of the patterns? What did you think of them as they related to the time of the year? Um, and is this something you think you would be able to stick with? That's certainly my biggest fault is that I will get started and I'll make all these great patterns and then middle of the year I fall off the wagon and never finish the challenge. So just let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you guys think about So My Style 2020. And that's going to do it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very soon. Bye!